for God. And if immorality is functioning in your body, God cannot function in your body. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how much you talk in tongues while you're committing sin. It doesn't change a thing. It doesn't matter how you lift your hands in the air while you're committing sin. As long as you're not doing right, your prayer is vain. You may hold your Bible while you're doing something wrong. It's also vain. Why am I telling you this? Spiritually, you cannot, you cannot move forward until you commit yourself to Him as the Lord of your life and as the Lord in His temple. He is the Lord. If that's His temple, let Him have His way in His temple. You cannot present your body to your boyfriend and say it's to God. It's not to God. You cannot present it to your girlfriend and say it's to God. It's not to God. And you never know much about God until you turn to Him with all of your heart. You never know that glorious experience of having God's Word working you until you make a real dedication to God. And you have to be decisive about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Romans chapter 12. From verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Or like another translation puts it, the spiritual act of service. And be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God had dared to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. As I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, unto God. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Why does God say that? Why does he ask you to present your bodies a living sacrifice? 
because God lives in your body. Did that ever occur to you? He lives in your body. God lives in your body. If you're born again, God lives in your body. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he lives there. And if it is not presented to God, he cannot use it. He cannot function in that body. God cannot function in your body if it is not yielded to Him. God wants to function in His temple. But if that temple is not submitted to Him, He cannot function in it. And a temple that God doesn't function in is like an ordinary building. Do you remember when Solomon built God a house? He said he was going to build God a temple and he built one, a great, great one. But after he had built it, it was only a building. Then he brought in all the vessels of gold, and vessels of silver, but it was still an ordinary building, just like any other building, but this was very, very beautiful. But being very beautiful doesn't make a difference to God. Well decorated. Like some of you. See, your body is a building. If God doesn't dwell in your body, he's an ordinary building. God cannot function in that building. Because he doesn't function everywhere. He is present everywhere, but his manifested presence is not everywhere. He does not function everywhere. See, there's electrical power in this building right now. But the electrical power is not functioning everywhere in this building right now. The electrical power is functioning in the places where we have tapped into that current. Do you understand? There are sockets that are not being used right now, for there's electrical power in them. There are electrical appliances that are not functioning right now, because they're not plugged in to the source of power. Same thing with you. If God doesn't function, in your body is an ordinary house. And so when Solomon built that great, great structure, he realized that that wouldn't make it God's temple. You may call it a temple. But if God doesn't function in his temple, it doesn't belong to him. You may write his name on it. Just like we go out in town today, you find some, some buildings. They may write Jesus boldly, the Jesus house, or the Jesus building, or God's house. Or they may even write, God is here, and he is not there. See? So, Solomon prayed. He got all of the children of Israel to come together on a special day. And they prayed to God. 
And in his prayer, I told God, this building is yours. We dedicate it for your use. We present it to you for your glory. Then he said, oh God, come into this building. By that hour, the singers were there with all the instruments of music. The priests were all dressed for the occasion. When they prayed to God. And as Solomon prayed to God that he would come into that building and make it his dwelling place in Israel. Suddenly, the power of God, the manifested power of God came into that building and filled the holy place such that the priests couldn't even remain standing to minister. They all fell prostrate on the floor for the presence, divine presence that was in there. Then God said, if anybody comes into this house to pray, I will hear from heaven. He said, if anybody is in any trouble, any way, and he turns toward this building to pray, said, I will hear from heaven. Now come to their aid. And he said, this building is my building. And I will watch you guys day and night. See? The consecration of that building was what gave God the legal right to come in.